Yeah. All right, so what I'm gonna have you do, just lay flat on the ground. You'll have your feet flat on the floor as well, so your knees will be bent up in the air. So just lay down, put your feet, right. soles of your feet down. Good? All right, perfect. So what I'm gonna have you do, try to relax as much as you can, okay? Don't, as hard as it is, because you know we're gonna talk about breathing, try not to think about breathing right now. All right. Okay, so just nice and relaxed. And I'll probably let people hang out here a little bit longer while we watch to see how they're breathing. You can tell he's thinking about it a little bit, or he's pretty naturally already starting to see just, just some movement in the belly, not as much as in the chest. That's what I'm looking for first. So go ahead and put one hand on your belly and one on your chest. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm just going to bring a little bit of awareness, and what if you do this on your own, what you're wanting to think about is just feeling movement in the hand here. You should feel no movement in the hand on your chest. So a lot of people, take a big breath in your chest for me. So a lot of people, you'll see that chest rise and fall, and a lot of people will see that is very natural for them, but we don't want that. So we begin teaching them to just feel it in the hand and the belly, nothing in the chest. Ben's doing pretty good here, okay? Is that something that's um, more natural when you nose breathe? Is it gonna, more it naturally does. gonna be a belly breath? Yeah, it does. Actually, breathing in through your nose cues your diaphragm better. So if we you know, kind of look at Ben here, we've got kind of lungs and heart up here. Your diaphragm comes right in here, which is the muscle that actually helps you breathe. So when you breathe, your diaphragm pulls down to create a vacuum to bring the air into your lungs. You don't actually pull air into your lungs by using your lungs. You do that by using your diaphragm. But what happens is we sit all day, we get out of poor posture, as you'll see here in a minute, as we make this more difficult for Ben, and we end up compensating by using our chest and shoulders to pull that air in instead of using our belly, okay? Is that because our, our like, our brain is telling us that we need more air? Because you mentioned that with, with working out, and I'm assuming when you feel like you need more air, that's when you start to really use the, the chest. I would say that's part of it, maybe when you're exercising, but honestly, for the most people we see, it's simply because they're thinking about trying to move your like middle toe only, right? You probably okay. haven't tried to do that in a while, so it's really hard to connect your brain to that middle toe and operate it. Um, so that's kind of what's happening with your diaphragm. It's a muscle that we just basically get out of rhythm of using. So if we sit all day, and we're not using our diaphragm to breathe, and we start compensating with our chest and shoulders because we have to get that air in somehow. And can you just, really, this is for me, guys. The diaphragm, what is that again? Is it, is it's it... a muscle that comes like right here. Okay, okay it, looks like a, it looks like a parachute or an umbrella. And so basically, if you've got your lungs here, as your diaphragm pulls down, it pulls air into the lungs. So it's a big muscle right here that separates your lungs from kind of your guts. And breathing through your belly cues the diaphragm to the... Yeah, we say belly. Um, like, I'll, here, I'll just, I'll take you through the next step here. And you'll kind All of right, let's down. do it. So, hand on your belly, hand on your chest. So now what we do, we really want to see how much we can fire up the diaphragm. So what I'm going to have Ben do is to imagine he's got a big balloon underneath this hand and his belly. I'm going to have him try to fill that balloon up as much as he possibly can on each inhale. So every time you breathe in, Try to fill this balloon up as much as you can without moving anything here. Good, and then just relax on the way out. Try to get a little bit more in each time, still no movement in the chest. Big breath in. Good. Okay, now keep doing this, but now I want you to start to feel some pressure through the floor, through your back. Start to feel the pressure in the ground. Yeah. Am I pressing in the ground? Yeah, as you breathe, that, breathe in, we want to fill that balloon up so much that you actually expand 360 degrees around your belly. So you should feel some pressure into the ground. So basically the more he, air he can pull in without using his chest, the more he's getting his diaphragm to draw down to pull in more air. You're trying to get that diaphragm to flex as much as you can. Good. Okay, so right now, the way he's breathing right now, he's in really good posture. Obviously fairly easy to do when you're on your, belt, on your back. This is a really good way to cue your postures. If you can breathe really, really, really deep into the belly like this, it means you're in good posture. Okay, a lot of times we think different things for our posture, but the best cue is, can I take a deep breath into my belly? So go ahead and sit down for me on the bench. We'll mimic sitting at our desk or something. Okay. So now I go hand on belly, hand on chest. All right. Try to breathe in just as much into your belly as you were before. For some reason, it's more difficult. It's a more difficult. Yeah. So, what I'll, what I'll have you do is two different adjustments. So, 
first one I want you to feel is really, really arch. Like puff your chest out, arch your lower back. Now try to breathe in. Like as big of an arch as you can. There you go. Try to breathe in. A little shallower. Hard, right? Okay, so that's one way we see poor posture throughout the day is people sit like this or stand like this. Okay. You can't breathe into the belly very well. Okay. Now do a slouch like you're at your desk. Be lazy. Same thing. Try to breathe just in your belly. Still a little more tough. Mm -hmm. So these are both ways we see poor posture throughout the day. Now try to find the right in between to get as much air in as possible in your belly. You can go back on the end of the chest. If you think about like having a belt buckle on, you can play with either pointing that belt buckle to the sky or pointing it towards the floor to help you breathe in more. Okay. Still definitely more challenging than on the floor. Yeah. But can you feel how as you adjust your posture, you can get more air into your belly sitting too, whether you're slouching or... Yeah, I can definitely air. feel it shallow here. I didn't feel it as much here, yeah. but I'm trying, am I, do you think I, should, I need to adjust my, my hip tilt? Yeah, you can adjust your hip tilt if you need to. I mean, right now you look pretty good. I think you're just not like, you just gotta work on cueing your diaphragm a little bit more to be able to get in those deeper breaths. Let's go ahead and stand up. I mean, the same thing here. A lot of times here's where we see too much of an arch, people stand like this. So same thing, hand on chest, hand on belly, and then just adjusting yep, your pelvic tilt, adjusting your ribs, find if you can breathe the best into your belly. You can point your belt buckle towards the sky just a little bit more. But again, if you play around with like too much of an arch or kind of slouching, finding that in between is how you can figure out if you're in good posture or not. Where can you bring the most air into your belly? So uh, the way to realize this is where, where can I fill up the balloon the most is, is exactly. essentially good posture. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So what, what can people take from this as they either go into the gym or as they're going through their day while they're sitting down yeah. at a computer? You know, what's something that they can yeah. do? So one thing we always tell people, especially when they're joining a gym, they're going to start exercising again, is for every movement in here, we should have that proper tilt where we're breathing into the belly well whether we're squatting or we're deadlifting we never want to lose that posture and we're adding load when we're in the gym so really throughout the day is when we need to be practicing having good posture we can't expect to have bad posture throughout the day come into the gym put weight on our backs and then be like okay now i'm gonna have good posture so you have right. to practice it throughout the day and just every now and then maybe once an hour whenever you can think about it asking yourself oh can i breathe into my belly that's a good way just to practice your posture throughout the day so that you can have better posture when you're exercising. Is that a muscle? So like, your diaphragm is, yeah. so your diaphragm's a muscle that you can exercise. Does it get more flexible? And, it's more and flexible. Like how, how much, how far out do you want to go? It gets more flexible. After you're able to breathe out, you also want to start practicing being able to breathe out laterally and through your back. So it's really about being able to breathe 360 degrees. Um, but yeah, your abs are involved as well. So your abs are involved more in the exhale squeezing the air out. So really every breath is a core exercise of breathing, breathing in with your diaphragm, which is really important if you're lifting really heavy weights to create that tension and uh, brace to lift. And every exhale, you're using your abs, using your pelvic floor, which we talk a lot about as well for health, um, to exhale. So you're getting those reps every breath if you're doing them correctly. 